This was one of the most interesting days we've seen on Wall Street in quite some time. On the one hand, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was roaring higher. We actually closed at all-time highs on the Dow as stocks like Coca-Cola that you see behind me here uh, roared to their own all-time highs. Now, at the exact same time, we saw the NASDAQ Composite fall over 1%. In fact, at one point during the day, we were down nearly 2%. A lot of last year's winners, your tech stocks, your growth stocks, really struggling here as we're starting to see upheaval within the market. Money is now rotating into things like financials and energy. We're starting to see interest rates make a bigger impact upon those rotations as well. So we'll talk about all of that, see what it means for our posture. Then we'll get into our trade application example where I wanted to focus on a communication services stock that's been out of favor for the last several months and appears to be rolling over yet again. So we're gonna take a look at that from a bearish perspective where we implement a short selling opportunity. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Market Outlook video presented by MarketScholars.com. I'm your host, Brandon Van Zee. It's January 4th, 2022. First of all, if you're new, welcome aboard. Remember to come on over here to YouTube, click subscribe on our channel, then go down below in the description area. Make sure you're signed up for our email distribution list so that way you can be notified whenever we post these videos. We're also heavy users of Twitter. If you're not doing so already, I would encourage you to follow me at Brandon Van Z. We really appreciate those of you that click like and retweet on these Market Outlook related tweets. And then last but not least, we do have a presence over on Facebook, feel free to join our group at that web address you see in the logo in front of you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into today's trade activity. And let's get started as we often do with the heat map of the S&P 500. Now you'll notice we have a lot more green squares here today than red squares. However, uh, the defining characteristic is the fact that while the red squares and rectangles are fewer, they are much larger in size. And remember how this heat map works is it is based upon market cap. Uh, congratulations, by the way, to Apple, uh, which achieved something no other public company has ever done, which is a $3 trillion market cap before falling uh, later on today. Uh, nonetheless, uh, that represents you know, an example of a company here at a $2.9 trillion uh, market cap that did fall here today, as did Microsoft, as did Amazon, as did Tesla and Nvidia and Alphabet and Adobe and a lot of those big tech-oriented companies that are out there. On the flip side, you'll notice all of these green squares off on the right-hand side here that belong to kind of smaller, uh, less important sectors, uh, nonetheless make up the majority of the market from a components perspective. So you'll see that we have a lot of green, especially up here in the financials. We have a lot of green over here towards the right in the energy area. Uh, we have a lot of green in the industrials area, kind of in that middle right there. And not to be outdone, there's Coca-Cola and some of those consumer staples that make up the Dow Jones doing quite well today uh, as well. Healthcare uh, struggled uh, to a degree, so similar to technology uh, really got hit. I know a lot of those Kathy Wood stocks really struggled here today. I also noticed that the um, utilities kind of sat out today's rally. Uh, we'll talk about interest rates here after a little bit, but I have a feeling that made uh, a major impact. Remember, oftentimes interest rates rising will benefit the financials, all else being equal, but will disadvantage the utilities, all else being equal. Also, uh, you could uh, say that the REITs kind of participated to the downside right alongside of utilities with that interest rate sensitivity. A um, couple of them that really uh, are shining brightly on the green spot uh, are Ford and GM, those automakers really roaring higher today. We actually own Ford in my top-down trend trading class that I teach on Monday morning. So we were thankful for today's 11 or 12% move higher there in Ford. But GM was right there knocking on the door as well uh, with a nice 7% gain of its own, which is a, a, a nice uh, deviation from what we saw uh, with Tesla, which of course is an enormous company compared to those other two these days. But Tesla was down 4% on a day when Ford and GM were roaring higher. So I'll be curious to see how that shakes out moving forward. Let's go ahead and take a look here at our market breadth as well. 
coming back over here to the main part of the platform and coming over here to the market watch tab I've got the S&P 500 pulled up here under index watch and you'll notice here that of the 500 stocks in the S&P 500 335 of them were higher on the day only 166 were down now we haven't looked at the S&P 500 yet but be aware that it was actually lower today not by much it was effectively flat uh, but it technically was a little bit lower and a lot of times if you're assuming that the s p 500 is lower you would expect that more than half of the components within that index were also lower that is not the case today we had a healthy advance amongst the vast majority of market participants within the s p 500 it's just that um, the biggest companies like your apples and your microsoft's and your tesla's were part of that 166 that were lower to completely offset all of the benefit of the smaller companies that were out there so again a very strange bifurcated day that we all just experienced here today let's take a look at our traditional four grid now just as a heads up on uh, chart 4b for those of you that are our premium market scholars that have access to all of our charts at home um, they did change the nasdaq composite ticker symbol uh, it used to be uh, it used to have an ending of G-I-D-S. So if you're pulling up uh, chart 4B on your own, uh, you may want to go in there and change the chart in the lower left to dollar sign C-O-M-P, and that will now pull up the NASDAQ composite. So that's not something that we did. That's something that Thinkorswim did on their side of the equation. So if you want to pull up the NASDAQ composite chart going forward, it appears like it's going to be dollar sign c-o-m-p and i'll eventually get in there and, and update that uh that chart and uh, get the shared links out to folks as well i just was made aware of that today uh so i, I wasn't aware that, uh, prior to today that that was the case so anyway uh heads up on that uh, let's take a look at the um, uh, at the various indices here today. Notice the, the S&P 500 was down today, as I mentioned before. Now, before going lower, uh, we did actually touch an all-time high. So I don't want to make it seem like today was just a terrible day for the market. It wasn't. Uh, we hit an all-time intraday high, but we ended up closing lower by three points or a whopping 0.06%. Uh, as you can see, that red candle plotted there on the S&P 500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, on the other hand, completely different ballgame. This is what I mentioned in the intro, where we broke out to all-time highs on the Dow here today. This was a pretty strong day. We didn't close at the highs of the session, so it could have ended a little bit better. Nonetheless, this was a bit of a breakout day that we saw on the Dow here today. Notice this candle back here on November 8th, and then notice the struggle to get up and through that candle here over the past week or so. Today was a much more kind of decided move to the upside. Yesterday was a really solid close where we closed at the high of the session, and then a nice follow through after that breakout here today so the Dow Jones all of a sudden is looking really strong and I would call it our leadership group of these four indices at a high level at this moment in time notice that the intermediate uh, reading is at 93 right now which just barely is surpassing the intermediate reading of 92 on the S&P 500 so that's a little bit of a change we haven't necessarily seen the Dow Jones be a leadership group but it appears that that is where we're at right now notice that both the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average continue to have what's known as strongly bullish postures that's what that dark green background color is telling us there where those green lines are in the upper reversal zone and they're both trading above their rising 30-day moving averages as well when that moving average is green like you see it is on the charts right now that means price is above rising moving averages which is uh, considered a bullish feature notice the two charts on the bottom the nasdaq composite on the lower left and the russell 2000 in the lower right both of those moving averages are a different color. They are yellow. Uh, in the case of the NASDAQ composite, um, you know, it is also what's uh, known as a weekly bearish intermediate posture according to the market forecast technical indicator. So notice the background color of the chart itself is light pink. Whereas with the Russell 2000, we actually have a dark green background for the first time since going back here to November. Uh, yesterday, it just had that light green background color. So today was the day when that green line on the Russell 2000 broke 
above the 50th percentile of that market forecast indicator. You can see the reading in the label right there is at 51 and rising right now, so we now consider that strongly bullish. Now having said that, when I compare the Dow Jones Industrial Average chart to the Russell 2000 chart down below, I much prefer the Dow Jones Industrial Average chart because it's clearly breaking out to new all-time highs, whereas the Russell 2000 has a long ways to go. But at least we're finally starting to stabilize there on the, on the small cap index. Remember, for a while, that thing was the house of pain. We had a bit of a double bottom that took place here uh, from the beginning of December to about the 20th of December right there. Uh, and it looks like that is trying to be built upon as we've moved forward. We're now spending a bit more time above that moving average, whereas in the past we had been trading below it. So in both the NASDAQ composite and the Russell 2000, the moving averages themselves are actually falling, but price is above it. And so that's what makes the color different than what we're seeing on the on the top two charts there. So the Russell 2000 was actually down today. Uh, it was down 0.16%. Um, nonetheless, because of the stability and the ability to kind of retain the strength that it's had from this move off the bottom, it allowed that posture change to take place because this was not an aggressive down move today. It was effectively just a flat move today, similar to what we saw on the S&P 500. The NASDAQ composite, that is a completely different story. We actually saw an aggressive down day on the NASDAQ composite. We were down 1.33%. In fact, at the lows of the day, we were close to down 2%. Um, we were, I was actually teaching my dividend growth investing class this morning and I was sharing with the um, students that the NASDAQ was down nearly 2% and yet our portfolio that we just got done building in the last six months, which contains 25 dividend growth stocks, 24 out of those 25 stocks were up today, many of them up over 2% on a day when the NASDAQ composite was down nearly 2% at that moment in time. So it was a very strange set of circumstances and really gave us a sense of what's happening um, within the market, which is a rotation towards quality, towards value, away from the growth aspect of the market. Now we've seen this a couple of times as the years have rolled on, and oftentimes the growth stocks do eventually come roaring back, but we never know when this time might be a little bit different. We'll have to keep our eyes on that. The markets have kind of gotten uh, quite extreme in some cases, right? You think of some of those meme stocks out there like GameStop or AMC or what have you, and you start to see some of these parabolic charts, and it makes you wonder if the growth universe kind of got ahead of itself and may need to have some type of underperformance uh, going forward because they had so much outperformance in prior years. So we'll keep our eye on that story, but just be aware that all of a sudden the NASDAQ composite appears to be struggling in comparison to a lot of those blue chip oriented areas out there. So uh, a recap, we do have strongly bullish postures on three out of the four indices. The Russell 2000 seems to be a little bit of an odd man out. It does not look nearly as strong as the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones, yet does still have that strongly bullish posture. And then we have one out of the four indices that actually has a weekly bearish posture right now, and that was the NASDAQ composite, which once upon a time for you know big strokes of last year was our, our strongest index out there. So we're kind of losing that leadership group here, or at least that's what one day suggests. And we'll keep you posted as time goes on as to whether that continues or not. Let's take a look at our three green arrows setup now. This will be chart 4D for those of you following along at home. And again, same thing. Notice over here, the NASDAQ composite used to be pulled up with COMP uh, colon GIDS. Now you're going to want to replace that with dollar sign COMP, and that will get you the NASDAQ composite index pulled up for those of you following along at home on chart 4D. But as we're looking at this, it's kind of interesting because right now we actually have 
three green arrows on all four of these charts. So despite the big give back in the NASDAQ today, we still are trading just barely above that moving average to retain that green arrow up there. Uh, and we continue to have the green arrows on the MACD and the stochastic down below. But keep in mind, if the NASDAQ falls again tomorrow, there's a pretty good chance that it would fall enough where it would fall below that moving average. And in which case, it would give you a red arrow similar to what it did back there. So um, NASDAQ is the one that is closest to losing its three green arrow status at this moment in time. So keep your eyes on that. The one that looks the best again up here in the upper right with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let's take a look at our 1040 crossover method now. This is chart 4C. Same thing here with the NASDAQ composite. Let's go ahead and replace that with dollar sign COMP. And when we're looking at this chart, just a friendly reminder that these are long-term charts here. These are three-year charts that we're looking at in this case. Remember, most of the charts we've looked at thus far have been like six-month or three-month charts. So these are three-year charts. The other thing that makes them different is that each of these candles represents an entire week, not just one single day. So um, kind of gives us a, a, a broader uh, view of the markets over time as opposed to a snapshot of what's happening right here, right now. And as we're looking at this, you know, the, the chart that probably looks the best to me from this perspective is the S&P 500. Notice that the orange line, which represents the 10 week moving average, has stayed steadily above that blue line, which represents the 40 week moving average. The Dow Jones in the shorter term looks a little stronger than the uh, S&P 500, but on this particular longer term chart, you can see that those lines are pinched together a bit more. In fact, you can read this PPO uh, number down below here to give you a sense of the distance between the lines. It's 3.76 here on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, whereas on the S&P 500, it's 6. 1, 7. So there's a wider distance between those two um, moving averages there, uh, telling us that there's been more persistent strength with the S&P 500 over a longer period of time. On the charts down below, you'll notice that they are also still in the bullish cross uh, situation because our background colors are green in all four of these charts cases but you will notice that it is the Russell 2000 where things are getting really dicey from this charts perspective notice how close that uh, orange line is to crossing that blue line we are right there on the cusp of it um, right now we only have a positive reading of 1.77 as you can see down below remember if that were to go below zero it effectively means that um, orange line is crossing below the blue line in which case we would refer to that as a death cross and uh, usually it does not uh, portend too well for bullish trading and environment. Sometimes you get some chop and slop. We saw that back here about two or three years ago. So it's not a guarantee that things will really spiral out of control to the downside. But obviously, if you want strength out of a market, you'd like to see your more sensitive line, in this case, the 10 week moving average, having separation up and away from your less sensitive line, in this case, the 40 week moving average represented by that blue line right there. Let's go ahead and pop on over here to the internet briefly. I always like to get a chance to say thank you to those of you that help support these free market outlook videos that we present here on YouTube. Last time around, 95 of you clicked like for me there on Twitter. As most of you are aware, I generally try to get to 100 likes. It's a nice round number and easy to think about. Uh, we didn't quite get there this last time around, but I do appreciate the 95 of you that went out of your way and took the five seconds to do that. I had someone suggest that um, rather than um, not do the video on Thursday, um, if I don't get to 100, instead change that to rather than doing a full video like I'm doing right now that's a half an hour long at least and um, doing a trade application example that if we don't get to 100 likes by uh, Thursday afternoon right before the market opens, then I'll just plan on doing a shortened video. And that way you guys kind of 
uh, aren't on the outside looking in with no video whatsoever. So we might give that a, a go and see how, how that goes. Hopefully that uh, is a, appealing to you uh, at some level there because at least you get some video out of it as opposed to just the write-up. Uh, but in general, again, want to stress that uh, these videos take a long time to produce, upload, edit, uh, look for trade ideas. All of that process takes David and I over three hours of our day to do a free video that we don't make a cent from. So if you want us to continue to do these videos for free as often as possible, we ask one simple thing out of you. Click like for us there on Twitter. And you can do it right here on our website in the widget, the Twitter widget. Notice the logo right there uh, and click that like button uh, or the heart button down below. You can also do it directly on Twitter. Remember, David and I will pin our most recent Market Outlook tweets to the top of our timeline. You can also find the tweet in question in the uh, description area directly below the YouTube player if uh, you watch this directly on YouTube. And then lastly, you can also find the tweet in question embedded within the uh, email that we send each of you during the notification process itself. So however one of those for uh, methods you choose, it all ends up in the same place. Uh, and we do really appreciate you uh, helping uh, support these efforts here. Uh, earlier today, I did teach my dividend growth investing class. That has now been posted. Uh, remember, that class is somewhat unique in that it is meant to be a long-term investing class. And so we do build those portfolios out every six months. So we are now starting my ninth dividend growth investing portfolio since being here at Market Scholars. Of course, I put together uh, even more than that uh, when I was at Invest Tools previously. Uh, so uh, we've done this for quite some time. But the reason I'm bringing that up now is because today was the day when we kicked off a brand new portfolio where we'll be building out 25 stocks in that portfolio between now and the end of June. Today we put in our stink bids and talked about how we got some excellent fill prices uh, on random flash crash moments throughout history. And uh, for those of you that just joined us, let's say for our Black Friday sale and you're newer to our organization, then today's class will be one that allows you to kind of get in at ground floor with that portfolio building process. So if you happen to miss it live here today and you're a premium member of ours, remember you can come up here to the Trading Rooms tab, just click on that and then you'll be able to find my uh, recording posted within the calendar itself. David also uh, taught his directional option strategies class earlier today, so make sure you check that out if you haven't done so already. Tomorrow morning, I'll be teaching my factor-based swing trading class at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and then David will be teaching his options inventory class at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Also wanted to make you aware that just before I started recording this video here today, I did post the December dividend increases. Now remember, that's one of the areas of our website that is not behind a paywall. So even for those of you that are not premium members of Market Scholars, you are welcome to check out that information. You can find it over here in the popular recent posts area if you're on our blog already. Otherwise, you can come over here uh, and hover your mouse over blog in the mega menu and then click on dividend growth investing right there and then you'll see the most recent post. Uh, but that will give you a lot of um, interesting stocks that have raised dividends more recently, some of the bigger increases, some of the bigger yields, et cetera, et cetera. So feel free to, 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 to leaf through some of that information if that floats your boat, if you are a dividend growth investor as I am. Also, a uh, quick heads up on the sector selector. Remember that this gets updated uh, on Friday evenings. So I uh, spent my New Year's Eve in the enjoyable uh, process of putting together a lot of market data. Now, you don't have to feel uh, sorry for me. I actually enjoy doing that. But uh, this was updated as of New Year's Eve right here. So this was the final update of the year since that happened to be Friday uh, last week. Uh, so this information is a couple of days stale at this moment in time. Normally that does not make a big impact, but I will say that in what we've seen thus far today and yesterday, we will likely see a big impact on the rankings on this coming Friday. 
In particular, energy and financials, I am currently expecting to rise in the rankings here based upon the really big movements we've seen out of them yesterday and today. Now, of course, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday could be bad days for them, and maybe that offsets it. But so far, what we've seen is really good strength out of those areas. So I do anticipate that both financials and energy will be rising through the ranks here on the sector selector come this Friday. We do continue to have a lot of defensive sectors up at the top including real estate still doing quite well um, consumer staples are still doing quite well but we have seen a bit of a drop off in healthcare and also technology so it's a bit of a different market and one where we have seen a lot of ranking changes compared to normal if you look at like back here in November there weren't all that many changes from a ranking perspective if you start looking at just the amount of kind of noise that you see back and forth uh, of ranking changes in the last two or three weeks here on this graphic to the right hand side, you can see there's been a lot of upheaval and that appears to continue to be the case as we kick off 2022. Let's go ahead and get back into the Thinkorswim platform and review some more charts. Let's do some 12 grid analysis and take a look here at the asset class 12 grid. As we're looking at this, a reminder that the background colors of these 12 grid charts will be either green or pink. If they're green, it means they have a bullish intermediate posture, according to the market forecast. If they're pink, it means they have a bearish intermediate posture. So as you can see here, uh, we do have a, a number of pink and green charts uh, to consider. Um, the, I think the most important chart here today is what we see in the lower right-hand corner. There we are looking at the U.S. Treasury yield, this the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield to be precise. You can pull that up on your Thinkorswim platform using ticker symbol TNX, but my oh my, have interest rates just busted higher in a big way in the last couple of days. We are basically back to three-month highs. We're just a hair below where we were trading um, you know, back here uh, in October, uh, but we're right there. One more day and we could be breaking to new highs uh, without too much difficulty. Now that might not seem like a big deal to you, right? There's a lot of assets that are near multi-month highs, including the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The surprising element of this is how quickly the temperature has changed and the sentiment has changed. Look at this candle right here on December 3rd. It looked like interest rates were falling off of the board on that day. Things looked terrible. We were actually in a downtrend in interest rates at that moment in time. You notice that red moving average. That was just on December 3rd. That was it almost to the nose exactly one month ago. So we went from multi-month lows to multi-month highs in one single month, and that is a major upheaval within the market. Remember, interest rates have a big impact on various stocks, particularly um, interest rate sensitive areas like um, your utilities and your REITs tend to struggle a bit more when interest rates go up, but financials really start to benefit. So we've seen a big surge in a lot of those banking stocks in the last couple of days as a result of what you're seeing right here. You also have um, the idea that growth stocks in general, particularly those that don't have any earnings right now, they tend to struggle all else being equal when interest rates rise. There's a number of reasons for that and it gets a little bit wonky with the math. But the point being, um, you know, when you're, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're bringing your, your cash flows forward you, and you're awash in cheap money, a lot of times uh, folks are willing to go into those more speculative areas when that um, money becomes a little bit more expensive, like it has more recently, then you start demanding more earnings growth. And many of those highly disruptive Kathy Wood types of stocks don't have any earnings whatsoever, and they probably won't have earnings uh, in the foreseeable future. And so those areas specifically are getting absolutely blasted right now, whereas we're seeing actual strength within a lot of those blue chip types of stocks like your Coca-Colas of the world. So. 
don't forget about the importance of interest rate sensitivity in this market, particularly when we have wild interest rate activity. Remember, that's not always the case. Sometimes interest rates will bore you to tears. Right now, we're seeing aggressive movements within interest rates, and that's what's causing a big part of that chaos that I just showed you a moment ago within the sector selector itself and other parts of the market as well. So remember, when interest rates rise, like we saw here, the opposite tends to be true for the bond prices themselves. So this chart in the middle rung off to the left-hand side, that represents your long-term U.S. Treasuries. And you'll notice that they have been sold off so hard in the last couple of days, we all of a sudden, once again, have an oversold cluster signal here on a daily candle chart. It's actually our first oversold cluster signal on TLT since going back here to the first week of October. Now you'll notice just after we got those two little green dots to show up on the chart, we had an immediate rally after that. Just for those of you that are new, let me go ahead and right click and maximize that chart so I can show you that those two little green dots that show up on the price chart represent the days when we had oversold cluster signals on the market forecast technical indicator down below where you've got the blue, the red, and the green lines all in the lower reversal zone on the same day. So you had this bottom being hammered out right here on those oversold conditions and that actually ended up being a good time to kind of go counter uh, trend to a degree. So I was half tempted today uh, of doing a bullish trade on TLT. I opted not to do it in the end because I found another acceptable candidate for our trade application, but I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility for some of you who might be bold uh, to be willing to take the other side of this trade saying, hey, enough is enough. Bonds have been thrashed here lately. They're more likely than not to start stabilizing and interest rates probably aren't gonna continue to surge unless we have some sort of really crazy market event in front of us. So keep that possibility in the back of your mind there with kind of fading this move lower on TLT by doing something like selling a bull put spread or something like that where you might expect stabilization or bottoming process to start forming here on TLT. You can see that commodities uh, did reasonably well today. Gold was up 0.74%. We also saw oil up 1.4%. Uh, there was some new uh, some news from OPEC today that helped support uh, oil, uh, and that in turn helped support energy related uh, stocks like Exxon Mobil and Chevron and the like. You can see here that oil has been rebounding nicely in the last two or three weeks to the point where we now have a green 30-day moving average here, again signifying price is now above a rising moving average as that moving average has started to curl higher. We're still not to that point with gold. Those of you that have been listening to my Market Outlook videos over recent months have heard me mention a number of times that I felt like gold would have been a good candidate for an iron condor over the last couple of months. And I think that would have worked out very nicely for any of you who might have done that type of a trade. Because although we've seen some steady improvement in gold prices here, it's not like they're rocketing higher. So had you kind of sold um, you know, your traditional 20 deltas on either end of gold, you probably would be making money on that trade as this has been more of a sideways performer here. But we do now have that um, strongly bullish uh, posture according to the market forecast. Uh, so be aware of that. We do have the dollar kind of sitting at a precarious place right now. Notice that the background color is dark pink, telling us that we have a strongly bearish posture, yet we're actually sitting just barely atop a rising 30-day moving average. Notice that tip of that moving average is green right now. So this could really break either way. Uh, this is probably one where you don't want to speculate uh, on either direction, you want to wa actually wait and see which direction it's going to go. Posture is telling us bearish, moving average is telling us bullish. Uh, and then when you look at where we're positioned right now compared to where we've been trading in the last month, we're almost directly in the middle of all of that activity there. So uh, the dollar can't really make up its mind right now as to which direction uh, it wants to break. So we'll keep our eye on that and uh, let you know what we see as the days roll on here as well. Bitcoin struggled here today. Not terribly, but it was down once again. And remember, that's been a theme. 
Uh, Bitcoin has been breaking down day after day after day for quite some time and is acting like one of those kind of Kathy Wood disruptive stocks, right? Bitcoin itself is not a stock, but you can kind of think about its risk characteristics in a lot of the same way. Now, the good news on that front is things have gotten so bad that you're seeing all these green dots stacking up here. Now, I don't necessarily trust the green dots on something like Bitcoin the way that I might trust them a bit more on TLT. And that all comes down to the, the boy who cried wolf, right? The more times that something is giving you these green dots and the market is not reacting the way that you expect it to, the less you should expect those green dots to help you in the future. And you tend to find that type of behavior on the more erratic security that are out there. Long-term treasuries are not erratic traditionally. They are usually pretty steady eddy uh, you know, securities. And therefore, when they do get oversold, it's worth sitting up and paying attention to. Bitcoin, you know, by its very nature, is very volatile. And so it's not nearly as big of a deal when you see oversold conditions with it because it lives and breathes on that e extreme volatility. Um, when it comes to the stock indexes up above, notice that the developed foreign stock um, index had a pretty nice day. It was up 0.57% today. The S&P 500 was effectively flat and EEM was actually down about a third of a percent. A lot of those Chinese internet stocks struggling again today. So that was a pretty impressive move, all things considered there with the foreign developed stocks. Remember, those are gonna be co uh, companies that come from countries like Japan and Australia and big chunks of Western Europe and the United Kingdom, etc. So they're not gonna be the more growth-oriented areas of the world, but they're gonna be the more stable areas of the world. And apparently those are some of the areas that are benefiting from this upheaval that I mentioned before, where you got some of the, the big financials and energy companies doing a bit better all of a sudden. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and review our sector, our, our sector rotation uh, now. Let's pull up uh, chart 5C for those of you that are premium members following along at home. As you can see from a market cap perspective, we actually have a lot of green charts on the board all the way across. Um, so that's a little bit different. Uh, remember, there are always going to be some that look a little bit better than others, and I think that that is worth pointing out here. Because as I look at this particular setup, um, I do still wonder about communications. Yes, you do have that green background color and we're back above the moving average, but notice that moving average continues to fall, right? And that's one of the only ones out there. The only other one uh, would be discretionary. Notice it also has a um, yellow moving average here. But of those two charts, communications has been in a more prolonged uh, bearish trend, whereas it's been a little bit more recent with discretionary, so it would be a little bit easier for discretionary to kind of click back into a bullish uh, move uh, fairly quickly. So of those two, it seems like uh, communications is a bit more bearish to me. I also wanted to point out that while healthcare continues to retain its strongly bullish posture, this is a third straight day of sell-off in healthcare. And they have not been kind days. This was more. This was a one. This is more than a one percent move lower in healthcare here today. It was down one point three two percent today. So it's been a little bit more aggressive there, at a time when a lot of the other blue chip areas of the world are actually uh, firming up. Right, Staples as an example, right next to it was up so much today, you actually have an overbought cluster, right? That's where you're gonna find Coca-Cola and the like. It was up 0.67% today, but uh, healthcare uh, is really struggling there. Some of those vaccine manufacturers like Moderna and Pfizer and some of those types of companies have really started struggling. Biotech has been a house of pain. A lot of those have been those Kathy Wood types of stocks as well, uh, but they're certainly not adding any assistance here. So healthcare is an area you gotta be a little bit more careful of. I don't wanna make too much of it because it's still above its rising moving average, but I just wanted to point out that it's kind of doing something right now what you, you wouldn't necessarily expect. When consumer staples have been strong, you would assume that healthcare is kind of doing approximately the same thing, and it's not. It's doing the opposite. It's falling off 
um, three days in a row here now. So uh, be on the lookout for that one. I hope it catches a bounce um, right around its rising 30-day moving average. I happen to be a big fan of healthcare companies, so for my own good, I'd like that. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm at least thankful for my over-allocation there in consumer staples. Remember, as dividend growth investors, you tend to find that the consumer staples are your largest allocation from a sector perspective. And it just so happens to be the case that the consumer staples are actually leading this market right now. They were up like 10% in the month of December, which is an immense amount of outperformance for what is traditionally a very boring area of the market. So I find that to be kind of interesting there uh, as well. I wanted to point out from a more positive perspective here today, uh, specifically what we saw out of financials, what we saw out of energy, and then also to a degree what we saw out of industrials. That was a nice move there. And remember when we were looking at that uh, heat map earlier, I was pointing out those areas specifically. Over here, you've got your energy stocks, a, a lot of them in the green here today on the right-hand side. Up here, you've got your financials, a lot of them in the green here today. And then kind of here in the middle is where you find those industrials. And look at all those industrials in the green as well. So that is now uh, being kind of reflected here on these individual charts where you're seeing financials have one of the biggest days they've had in quite some time, basically right back up here to three month highs. The same thing can be said here with energy after it looked like it was kind of falling out of bed a couple of weeks ago. They've come surging back very nicely. They're back to basically their three month highs as well. And industrials isn't quite back to where they were back here in the middle of November, but they're right on the cusp. They could easily break through that tomorrow if we ended up having a good day in the market. So those three areas saw some e extremely strong interest in their share prices here today. And I think there was a lot of rotation happening under the surface where things like technology, which was down over 1% today, money was rotating to a degree out of technology into financials, industrials, and energy. So let's keep our eye on that potential theme there as well. All right, let's get into our trade application example now. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pull up chart 4A the market forecast one grid. And I'm gonna pull up ticker symbol CHTR. This is Charter Communications. Naturally, with a name like that, it's part of the communications sector. And as you can see, this is a stock that uh, hasn't looked too healthy for quite some time. This happens to be a three-month chart that we're looking at here. But you do see a fairly clear, defined trend of lower highs and lower lows on this chart. The high was way back here on October uh, 7th. You had a follow-up lower high here in um, the end of October time period. You had another follow-up lower high here in the middle of November. You had another follow-up lower high here at the beginning of December, and that brings us to where we're at today. About a week ago, it kind of topped out here on December 30th and then started rolling over yet again. It wasn't until today that the posture changed to bearish on an intermediate perspective because you'll notice that green line was rising along the way as it was trying to bounce off of this low that it placed on December 14th. So that green line started rising out of the lower reversal zone and as it was doing so, then it starts to become weakly bullish. It even got to be strongly bullish for a couple of days. But now all of a sudden it looks like it's rolling over again because this stock has sold off for three days in a row. So you'll notice that that green line is now pointing lower. You can read in the label there that it says it's at 51 and falling. Keep in mind that if it falls again tomorrow, there's a good chance it goes below 50. And in which case we would then be back to that darker shading of pink on the chart. So uh, what I did in this particular case was a very basic trade. It did not involve the options market. I just simply uh, short sold uh, shares of the stock itself and I put our upside stop loss a couple of pennies above the high of that candle on December 30th. And in order to shoot for a one-for-one -one reward risk relationship, 
our price target to the downside is down here at around $615. Remember, the trade was already done while the market was open today. For all of you who are premium members of Market Scholars, I sent you the trade alerts through our Telegram app. So that way you can be aware of it and consider taking the trade for yourself uh, before everybody else who finds out about it on the free video later that night. So trade was already done. If you need the trade details and including the you know execution prices and the exact price targets and all that check your telegram app there but that was the basic idea we saw a posture shift from bullish to bearish here today we are kind of hanging out on the underside of this falling 30-day moving average again after it had gone yellow there for a brief amount of time we're back to red on the moving average just like we've been for basically the entire three months of this chart so I'm hoping that that trend holds and it continues to go lower if it doesn't and if this is the type of stock that rallies moving forward then we do have our stop losses set uh, so that way uh, we can get out of the trade and look for something else so that's what I had for you here this evening I hope you enjoyed the presentation it was a very interesting day on Wall Street and we had a lot of upheaval here today if you got value out of the presentation I ask one simple thing out of you click like for me there on Twitter as long as we're up and over a hundred likes on Thursday I'll plan on doing another full-length video if we're under a hundred likes then I'll probably just do a shortened 15 minute you know um, video on the uh, market indices themselves but would not include a trade application example so if you want the full-length video click like for me on Twitter if you prefer the shortened uh, version of only 15 minutes then don't click like on Twitter so with that I want to wish you all the best of success with your trades and your investments goodbye for now